लिया कर दे दांग उगलों के में पालवे नहीं टी ले माँग इतना टी उठेगा प्रिंट कर ले टी के ला टी उठेगा प्रिंट कराना तू बह बैठे टी उठेगा टीन नो ना माँग के नाम में अपने काटे डे फिजिकल दूर ना में दूर से इट्टे कर दे टी उठेगा तीन वाले इधर काटे प्रिंट करके नहीं दिए नहीं सप्तने हर में लिए मुझे सोचो सब लाइट की नहीं कर the things which emit light the things that think the things which emit light the things which emit light are called sources of light things which emit light are called sources of light harane ilagata liya ganna examples tika okata liyanna puluwan namai stars मून लिया नहीं ठीक है मैं वैसे इतने को लिया स्टार्स मून आह कैंडल इधर पासे उन नंग इलेक्ट्रिक बल्ब बेगा फायर फ्लाई के निक तो सेट कर लिया ना बोलो राइट ओके सो द नेक्स्ट वन लुमिनस ऑब्जेक्ट्स लुमिनस ऑब्जेक्ट्स लुमिनस ऑब्जेक्ट्स द थिंग्स व्हिच produce their own light the things which produce their own light then within the moon doesn't belong right so when you talk about the moon moon can produce a light the moon can emit a light but not on its own karane moon can emit a light but not on its own so moon actually get the sign uh, get the light of uh, sun and it reflect its it, it reflects the sunlight into different direction that's why we see the moon but the moon cannot produce a light itself okay so moon ta bay age own light ekak produce karna it can reflect the light of sun so you know that the moon is a source of light it, it, it can emit light but it does not produce an, its own light okay so moon na to one example you can write as examples for luminous objects you can write firefly or else candle an electric bulb sun for sure and then uh, candle i the examples for sources of uh, luminous ob luminous objects okay next one non luminous objects non luminous objects non luminous objects objects that do not emit light 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 are called non luminous object so wood not emit light are the bricks would not emit light eta pass say clay concrete metals metals will not put the light reflection ekak wage denna puluwan but uh, all the other rough surfaces oy set ekak light emit karanna right uh light emit karanna wood bricks stones concrete Write some examples. Plastic examples there. Oh, light emit karan hai. Harane. So, apni kata kara light emit karan uh, light sources kya na, which do not produce their own light, but they emit a light anyhow. And we spoke about luminous object, which produce their own light and emit their own light. 
so moon was not an example for a luminous object it was an example for a uh, source of light and then we spoke about uh, non luminous objects objects we, which do not uh, produce or emit any light right next transparent objects right so when you talk about this transparent object you know that glass air and all of these are, are transparent objects through which light can totally pass okay so write an uh, write the definition object through which light totally pass passes objects through which light totally passes objects through which light totally passes are called transparent objects objects through which light totally passes are called transparent objects example uh transparent glass transparent glass okay transparent glass clear water clear water clear air diamond so these are some examples for transparent objects uh, through these objects you can uh, through these objects light totally pass right light will completely pass through current flow these through these objects so these are the examples of transparent uh, objects okay All right then opaque right opaque label definition okay? objects through which light uh, objects through which light does not pass at all objects through which light does not pass at all object through which light does not pass at all like covid at any objects through which light does not pass at all through which light does not pass at all examples cardboard wood again metals okay uh yeah let's say concrete as well podda katya right objects through which light does not pass at all objects through which light does not pass at all next example sorry next next definition translucent objects translucent translucent object now when you talk about translucent objects now have you seen in some of the bathrooms we have a uh, we have a window or as a glass you can see the person's shape okay you can see the person's shape or is in a better way that you can see that there is a person having a bath inside the washroom and you can even see the light which is coming from the washroom but you can't recognize the person you can't uh, go for fine details on the person so through these translucent objects light partially passes but in a way that you cannot recognize the objects on the other side of the glass right so through these transparent translucent objects light can pass light can pass partially in a way that the observer cannot observe the details of the objects on the other side of the uh, translucent object did you get my point guys there on the make keep it side of the translucent object very clearly so let's write the definition let's write the definition objects in which sorry objects through which objects through which objects through which objects through which light passes
partially light passes partially objects and uh, we are writing the definition for translucent objects objects through which light passes partially objects through which light passes partially objects through which light passes partially with irregular changes of with irregular changes of direction of light rays 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 making it impossible making it impossible making it impossible to see the objects on the other side of the translucent object making it impossible to see the objects on the other side of the translucent object okay so the definition again from the beginning objects through which light passes partially with irregular direction with irregular changes of direction of light with irregular changes of direction of light making it impossible to observe the objects on the other side of the translucent object clearly making it impossible to observe the objects on the other side of the translucent object clearly okay hari right eta passe ogolange pute man napadi diagram ekak pena dewa so this thing this thing you have to write it over here right so, so you can see that there is a space over here right uh, you can use this space right this space you can be used you can be used for this purpose uh oh hold on namai yeah this space huh? this space you can use to uh, Draw what I'm going to say you right. See here, uh, this uh, I want to tell is this. Okay. Hold on. Okay, this one. see this okay so if you see this uh, picture for transparent objects right see the picture for transparent object you can see that the transparent uh, through transparent object the light can totally pass through right through the transparent object the light rays completely pass through right light rays completely pass but when you talk about the uh, opaque object right the light rays cannot completely pass no all the, almost all the light rays are blocked by passing through it okay and when you talk about the translucent object okay now see here the light ray actually when trying to pass through the translucent object it changes the di direction light rays actually can pass through some of the light rays now can you see that this light ray has not got the ability to pass through the uh, uh, translucent object okay so this light ray has not got the ability to pass through the translucent object but some of the light rays have got the chance to pass through the light uh, translucent object but still they have completely changed their direction of propagation like they have completely changed their direction of traveling when they are passing through the translucent object right so then you can from if you are observing now in the in physics we draw the eye like this okay this is our eye in physics so if you are observing through this trans 
translucent object for a translucent, uh, translucent, let's say a translucent glass or whatever. Through this translucent gun, if, uh, glass, if you're observing any object on the other side, you could be seeing that there is light on the other side and slightly the shape of the object, but not exactly the details of the object. Because why? Light from that object or light from the uh, light source of the other side is trying to uh, pass through this transparent, translucent object while uh, they get some of the light rays from the other side gets the ability to pass through it actually, but still the light rays totally changes the direction. So observer will not be able to recognize the shape or the details of the object on the other side of the translucent object. That's one the reason. So when you, when you talk about these three objects, simply opaque objects do not allow any of the light rays to pass through them totally. Uh, transparent object allow almost every light ray to pass through the object completely. But uh, translucent object, they allow some of the light rays to pass through the object, but still those light rays which are getting the capability of trans, uh, traveling through the translucent object would also change the direction of propagation. So because of that, a person who is observing on the other side of a translucent object could see that there is a light or an object on the other side, but the details of the object will not be clear, right? Guys, was that clear to you? Was that clear to you, Plamai? Hello? People, was it clear to you? Yeah. See things, okay? So the question is, how do you see things? What's your idea? So we'll have to discuss it first so that I can give you an idea. How do you see things? Now, when you, when you talk about this, okay, you have to see different things and basically we can categorize them into two, right? How do you see things? There are two things for us to see. Uh, one type is, now keep it in your mind, we will draw the eye in physics like this, okay? In physics, we draw the eye like this, right? That's how we draw it. First thing, we can see luminous objects. So as you know, luminous objects emit a light by themselves. So you can directly see them. Now, just imagine of a sun, imagine of a sun, okay? It emits its own light. So you can actually directly see it because it emits its own light. So that light, when it reaches you, you can see the object. When the light emitted by the sun reaches you, you can see the object directly. Okay, no problem at all, right? You can see it. The next thing is, how would you see an object without, uh, with, object with, which does not emit light? Now just think of, an, uh, think of a house, okay? Think of a house, house is a non-luminous object, no obvious, obviously. So then how do you see this object? How do you see this object? We have, we have the capability of seeing these objects as well. How do you see these objects? Now, first of all, what, what really happens, the light from a light source falls on these objects. Light from, it can be from any light source, right? It can be a moon, it can be moon, it can be stars, or it can be a artificial source of light, right? So light from a light source falls on these falls on these objects, and the reflected light reaches our eye. Okay, so then we can see this non-luminous object as well. So we have two different things to see: luminous objects, since they emit their own light, we can directly see them. And there are non-luminous objects; they do not emit their own light, but still, when from a light source fall light, sorry, when from a light source light falls on these non-luminous objects. And when that light is reflected into our eye, we could see the object. And just think, to see something, to see something, you need two things, right? One, light. To see anything in this world, you need uh, uh, light. The next thing is you need vision, not eyes. Though you have eyes, if you do not have the vision, you will not be able to see anything. So your vision is very much important to see So see something, you need two different things. The light, very compulsory. And the second thing is vision, okay? So when you're looking at things, you need, we actually look at two different things, luminous objects and non-luminous objects. This is how we do that, okay? So uh, read the definition here. You have the definition over here. How do we see things? Any object which emit light can be clearly seen as the light emitted by these objects reaches our eyes and creates an image of them. So that's about the first situation. Light from light uh, emitting object directly reaches our eye and creates an image of the object. Okay, right. 
Second one, non-luminous objects. So talking about these sort of objects, non-luminous objects could be seen when light falls from a uh, light falls on them are being reflected by them to various di directions, diffuse the di diffuse reflection or irregular reflection, and the reflected light rays falls onto our eye, reaches our eye, right? So I'll be teaching you what regular reflection and irregular reflection later. And for the, for the moment, keep it in your mind, if this non-luminous object are lighted by a light source and that light is reflected into your eye, you will be able to see this uh, non-luminous objects as well. Aren't right. So then I want you to draw that part over here. Right. This eye and the home and how do you see these two different objects? I want you to draw it over here. Okay. And I want now you have to highlight this part. Non-luminous objects uh, could be seen when light falls on them are being reflected, reflected into various directions, diffuse, you call it as diffuse, diffuse reflection or irregular reflection. And I'll teach you what uh, irregular, uh, irregular reflection or diffuse reflection is. Quickly do it, what, uh, what's on the board. So here in this uh, case, we need a sharp pencil, a ruler, for sure. Everything can't be drawn with uh, pens. You need to erase things. You need to draw it again and again. So you need to use a pencil like this. Forget to uh, mention it to you. Get ready with a pencil and a, uh, what do you call it, a ruler. You need uh, those. Sir, what do we need to highlight? Highlight that part. And draw this diagram. Okay, after drawing that, right, uh, I want to tell you a few things, okay? So, uh, so we want to talk about what uh, regular reflection and irregular reflection also. So before that, I wanted to uh, tell a few things. Uh, when you're drawing light rays, as you all know, light rays can travel only in straight lines. So that's a fact up. So you should have heard of it before. Light rays can only travel through straight lines, right? So when you're drawing light rays, you should draw straight lines in which the directions are marked. So this arrow indicates you into which direction this light ray travels, okay? So if you just draw a pencil stroke, right, without the arrow, you would not be indicating the direction of the light ray. So this would be just a pencil stroke. If you mark the arrow over here, so this is the bow and arrow, Duna that arrow this is, okay? So you should, if you are drawing light rays, your light rays has to be like this. They have to be like this, okay? So keep it in your mind, you can't go, uh, you can't mess with that, it will not be marked, okay? Sometimes when you do just pencil strokes without having the proper characteristics, you will not be marked, so be careful with that. Okay, now you need to learn, you have already learned about this uh, regular reflection and irregular reflection. I hope you can't remember them. So then I'll be teaching that again because you will need it. So where to write about this regular and irregular reflection? So if you have the printed tube on the, Final page on that, uh, okay, you should have printed this 19th page. So on the 20th side, you have an empty space. You should have an empty page, empty space. So there you can write about this uh, regular and irregular reflection, okay? Right, so uh, I'll be talking about this like this. Okay, regular reflection. Regular reflection, okay? And the next thing is irregular reflection. Or else we call it as uh, diffuse reflection.
okay now it's like this regular reflection is like this okay see here if you have right if you have a smooth surface regular reflection is done by smooth surfaces hold on so keep it in your mind regular reflections can be done by smooth surfaces right so when you have a smooth surface right when you have a smooth surface like this right so let's mark it like this the unnecessary side of the smooth surface is like this so when you have a smooth surface okay we have a smooth surface like this okay when a light ray comes onto this smooth surface perpendicularly that light rays bounces back or reflects back along the same path we will learn this as a point don't worry about it we'll talk about that later if a light ray falls on this surface perpendicular to this surface that light ray would get reflected back along the same path and if there was a light ray falling on this surface like this this light ray would get uh, reflected back along like this creating like uh, equal angles over here and when you have another light ray falls on this object like this that would also be reflected uh, nicely like this if there was another light ray falls on the object like this it would get reflected like this so now you have a regular pattern a parallel light parallel beam of light rays falls on it and it reflects back parallelly okay so this happens on smooth surfaces uh take place on smooth surfaces smooth surfaces smooth and shiny surfaces take place on smooth and shiny surfaces okay examples on mirror this would definitely happen okay mirror on mirrors this would definitely happen right take place on smooth and shiny surfaces how what the reflection is smooth uh, regular reflection okay uh, so so what you have to understand from the, this one uh, if there was light falling on this object if there was light falling on this object okay, if there was light falling on this object uh, if there was light falling on this object from a light source like this okay from a light source like this if there was light falling on this uh, mirror from a light source like this you would be only able to see the light coming from that object if you observe it from somewhere here so as i told you this first i this i just gave it to you as an example how to tell you how the light would reflect if light if a light ray falls on this object perpendicular it would uh, reflect back along the same path but this is not a light ray falling from that object that source of light on this surface look so if there were light rays falling from that uh, look, uh, that uh, light, light source from this object those light rays would uh, would get up uh, orderly reflected and you could only be seeing these light rays if you observe it from this side if you kept your eyes somewhere over here you would not be able to uh, see these light rays because those light rays would not reach your eye because they have a pattern of reflecting okay they have they will be reflecting on this side so what you can see here if you want to see the or image of an object from a surface like this you would definitely need to uh, see the light rays from this place now just imagine right imagine uh, so when you go in front of a mirror you could definitely observe the mirror too but just imagine okay just just imagine if you uh, come a side onto the mirror if you come on come onto a side of the mirror and if you project the light on the mirror that light would strike on the mirror and would get reflected onto another side have you seen that so if you want to observe the reflected light ray you should not you should now if your light if your torch is somewhere over here you should not be uh, holding here like standing over here you should be going somewhere else to get that light okay so that's that is as a result of regular reflection so the disadvantage on this case is if you want to see the light rays which are getting reflected by this smooth surface you need to get get into a specific place to see the light rays okay so so even if you want the eye and the light source no problem you can mark it and when you talk about the irregular reflection 
Imagine that you have an irregular surface. You have an irregular surface, which means a rough surface, not a smooth surface. A uh, rough surface. So all of the surfaces other than mirrors are rough surfaces. Okay. So imagine that you have a rough surface like this. So this is how we mark the rough surface. No, no, there's nothing smooth on it. Okay. We mark it as a rough surface. Okay. Uh, so I would uh, mention example. So irregular reflection take place uh, on rough surfaces. Okay, take place on rough surfaces. So if there was a light ray falls on this object, if there was a light ray falls on this object due to this roughness of the surface, we can't predict into which direction would the light ray get reflected. Okay, if there was a light ray falling onto this point, that would get reflected onto somewhere else like this. No proper odd, no proper odd, right? No proper prediction about the light reflection of light, light ray. Sometimes a light ray might fall on this and would get reflected onto the same part. Sometimes the light ray would get uh, fall onto this side and would get reflected onto this part. Okay. So you have no proper way of getting reflect the uh, way of way for the light to get reflected. So in this case, right now, if you just imagine all these light rays are like, uh, if you just imagine now one light ray fall fell, fell onto this surface from this side, it got reflected. Other one, uh, I I would I would mark it uh, as parallel light rays. Hold on. So then I would uh, would understand it with a clear image. I would make it similar to that. Okay. Uh, right, so just imagine that there were three parallel lines for parallel light rays fall falling on this, they would get reflected in different directions, okay, not into the same direction, okay. So that's what I wanted to tell you. Sometimes it would get reflected back along the same path. Now, earlier situation. When the parallel rays of light fell on the surface of the object, we could predict the way how they are getting reflected onto another direction. But in this situation, even though the parallel light ray falls onto this object from a light source, right, from a light source, but you can't predict the direction how would they get reflected. Okay. So, can you see that this object, this reflection of the light rays, could be seen by being here? Can see by can be seen by being here? Can be seen by being here? Or sometimes because of this phase, it can be uh, it can be observed by being here as well. Okay, so the advantage of diffuse reflection is when light falls on them, those objects could be seen from everywhere, every direction. I can see the object from here. I can keep my eye on this side and I can see the object. And if I keep my eye on this side, there will be light rays which in my eye I can see them. So that is the advantage. So almost all the objects that we find in our environment. Do irregular reflection or diffuse reflection. That's why, that's why I could see this object. I could see this object from any direction because when light falls onto this object, this would get this would reflect light not only into specific type of direction, specific uh, direction, it would reflect light into every direction. So I could see it from here, I could see it by being here, I could see it by being here. Can you understand, guys? Right? That's what the diffuse reflection is. So under diffuse reflection, the light rays falls on an object, rough surface would get reflected into all the directions. As a result, you can see the object from everywhere, right? So if it is a regular, regular reflection, the light rays would get reflected only into a particular direction. So if you want to see that object, you need to get, go to that particular direction into which the light rays got reflected. Are we clear with this, guys? Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, so we have to talk when we are talking about non luminous object. When you are talking about non luminous object, we basically follow this reflection, not an uh, irregular reflection, diffuse reflection. That's why we are capable of looking at these objects from everywhere when the object is lighted up with a light source. Okay, uh, so was it clear to you, Navidi Theravada? Right, uh, a light ray, right? You need to know what a light ray is and how would you draw. Uh, a light ray. Uh, light ray. 
Light ray would be like this, a single stroke with a pencil and the ruler. And a beam of light rays, a, be a beam of light rays, a beam of light rays, it has to be a parallel beam of light rays, a parallel beam of light rays, a parallel beam of light rays, you should draw parallel lines with uh, these arrows to indicate a parallel beam of light rays, then a convergent beam, convergent beam of light rays, so it has to be a light rays coming to a single point, okay, light rays coming to a single point, Several light rays meeting at a single point is called a convergent beam of light rays and a divergent beam of light rays. A divergent beam of light rays uh, from a single point. From a single point, the light rays get uh, spread out, get diverged. Okay, so this is for a divergent beam of light rays. Draw it. Sir, this should also be drawn on the blank page. Yeah, here. No, no, no. This place. Here. So it. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Done. Shall we move on? Okay. okay so we are moving sir. to the next part. Okay. Next part uh, tells the reflection of light on the next page. Reflection of light. Okay. So they asked, what is, what do you mean by, what is the definition of what do you mean by reflection of light? Okay. I would tell you like, right? hold on, I'll tell you what reflection is. Okay. Uh, so then you have a clear, clear idea what reflection is. So then you can just uh, build up the Definition on your own, even if you want, right? So now just imagine, right? Imagine uh, you have a surface, okay? It, it would be a shine, a smooth, shiny surface, let's say, a smooth, shiny surface, okay? You have a smooth, shiny surface, okay? You have a smooth, shiny surface, okay? You have a smooth, shiny surface. And now see, there's a light ray coming. Don't do it. I'll tell you why, where to do it, okay? Uh, you have a smooth, shiny surface, and there is a light ray coming. Now, what is this? Now, when we were talking about uh, transparent objects, I stated that the clear AI is a transparent uh, thing. Okay. So now, if you have a smooth, shiny ob uh, object, let's say this is a mirror. Uh, to the mirror, light is coming through AR, right? So it's a transparent object, a transparent medium. Through air light is coming. Let's mark this is air, okay? Through air light from a light ray, light source comes towards this uh, small shiny object, which is a mirror. So then what would happen to this light ray? It would get bounced back to where? Into the same medium where it came from. It came through air, striked on the mirror surface, and then got bounced back again back to air. So this, is, this phenomena is technically called as reflection. So if you have a light ray coming from a transparent media and then medium, and if it strikes on a smooth, shiny surface, and if it bounces back into the same medium where it came from, we call that phenomenon as reflection. Okay, hope you're clear with that. So that's simply the reflection is. So the statement say, uh, says here, the change of the propagation of the direction of light rays incident on a smooth, shiny surface, which means a plane mirror, 
is known as reflection. So once again, read it. The change of the propagation, the change in the propagation of the direction of light rays incident on a smooth, uh, shiny surface. Incident, you know, can I strike? I mean, like it's up, you know, uh, strike on a smooth, shiny surface, which means a plane mirror is known as reflection. So in, in your words, I have stated it again. Bouncing back of a light ray coming from a transparent medium after striking on a smooth, shiny surface into the same medium where it came from is called the reflection of light. So if it is bouncing, the light ray came through air and after striking on the smooth, shiny surface, which is called the mirror, if the light ray got reflected back and into the same medium, so we call this phenomena as reflection. Put up your hand, those who are clear with that fact. Okay, right. Hold on, Ellie got dropped. Ellie, we were talking about the reflection of light. Were you there with that? Oh, you got dropped. Uh, I was there. As soon as I got dropped, I joined. All right, okay, no problem. Okay, so then you have the idea how the reflection uh, works, okay? So then uh, there are different ways, or there are actually different smooths. Surfaces. Okay, when you talk about this uh, smooth shiny surfaces, we call about call them the mirrors. There are plane mirrors, there are curved mirrors, there are lots, right? We have talked about all of them. So uh, thereafter, thereafter, if a light ray strikes on the plane mirror, okay, we are talking about plane mirrors then, right? Okay, so so we have to talk about uh, curved mirrors as well. Okay, uh, so in between these two, right? In this, in this, in between these two, uh, can you mention here? Can you mention here a topic? Reflection by plane mirrors. I missed it. Reflection by plane mirrors. And then underline it. It's a it's a it's a topic. Reflection by plane mirrors. I missed it. So after writing, after discussing about this, after understanding discussion, uh, what's reflection, we have to mention ref, uh, reflection by plane mirrors. Reflection by plane mirrors. Okay, right. Afterwards, look at the board. Right. Okay. So then, uh, we, uh, when you have plane mirrors, there are different ways how a plane mirror could be reached with uh, light rays. Okay. There are different ways how a light reaches the plane mirror. Okay. So uh, in the first situation, it says if there was a light ray reaching the plane mirror perpendicularly. Okay. In the first situation, they say if there was a light ray reaching the uh, plane mirror perpendicular. You know what perpendicular is. Right. Uh, so if there was a light ray reaching the plane mirror perpendicularly like this. So then ultimately it should create a 90 degree angle with the mirror surface. Okay. So this is a light ray which is reaching the plane mirror perpendicularly. Okay. Reach perpendicularly. If it reaches the plane mirror surface perpendicularly while creating a 90 degree angle with the surface of the mirror, the light ray would get reflected back along the same pathway where it came from. Now I'm not telling that it is reflecting back to the same medium. Yeah, obviously it is reflecting back to air again, but now see it is going back along the same pathway where it came from, right? After part of the game, it gets reflected. Can you understand? So this, this is kind of a law that you have to keep it in your mind, right? So when you have a plane mirror and if there was a light ray coming towards the plane mirror, in a way that the light ray get, uh, get incident on the plane mirror perpendicularly, while creating a 90 degree angle with the mirror surface, the light ray would get reflected back along the same pathway. Okay, that has to be learned as a rule. Okay, so here you have to draw this diagram. This one, if a light ray strikes on a plane mirror perpendicularly, the light ray gets reflected back along the same path. So here, what's on the board has to be copied. So this is the rule, okay? Keep it in your mind. So now you know if there was a light ray coming to the plane mirror with, an, uh, with a 90 degree angle while creating a perpendicular, sorry, while creating a uh, 90 degree angle with the mirror surface, how would the light ray should get reflected? Okay, now you have an idea about that. Okay, done with that, guys. Use, use the ruler.
sorry yeah right okay now the second situation of number two situation now there there can be a chance uh, chance where a light ray could uh, come strike with the mirror surface perpendicularly isn't it right we can have a chance of light ray coming towards the mirror surface uh, sorry angular i'm sorry yeah angular right so i would mark this mirror okay i would name this mirror right i will name this mirror uh, as mn let's say mn i am marking this mirror as mn right like this mn okay i would mark it mn and then uh, see that there is a light ray coming towards this mirror like this okay there was a light ray coming towards the mirror like this okay i would mark this point the uh, i would mark the point that the light ray uh, touched the mirror as b the place where the light ray uh, touched the mirror was marked as b and then i would mark this light ray as a a b is the light ray and then uh this light ray would get reflected okay this light ray would get reflected like this okay this reflected light ray i would mark it as a c so b c is the reflected light ray okay in this case uh you have a theory here you have a theory here uh, a concept right to reach that uh, to get an idea about that we need to do a small construction we need to do a small construction which we call as a uh, the normal right uh, i'm me i'm doing this construction like this okay so i would mark it is as bx okay now this construction is called normal okay this construction is called normal uh, how do i do this construction so this is imaginary this is imaginary uh, because it's not a light ray this is a light ray real light ray coming from a light source let's say it is coming from a light source i would mention a torch over here right a torch over here right it's a torch a light ray coming from there and there is a there is this light ray getting reflected these two are real light rays a b and c uh, b c are real light rays uh bx what i mark with uh, green is a construction done by me okay so how do i do this construction keep uh, keep it in your mind i have to start this construction i have to start this construction from the point b okay i would uh, i would uh, mention what uh, all these are right so as you can see here uh, this ab ray a B ray, the, uh, the ray which reaches the mirror is called the incident ray. We call it as the incident ray. Incident ray. Okay. Uh, I want you to follow this. Don't draw it. Don't draw it. Uh, right. Now here is the place where you draw it. Don't draw it. Right. Uh, just keep the space. And can you see that M N is the plane mirror? Yeah, I have marked it as well. Right. So A B is the incident ray. You have these sort of things. I wanted to write few things within brackets in front of them. So just start writing this, right? So M A uh, so A B is the incident ray. Can you understand? And of, and also can you see that M A uh, A B is the incident ray? Incident ray means the ray which reaches the mirror. Can you see that? Right? A B is the incident ray, which means the light ray which uh, light ray which reaches the mirror. Okay, light ray which reaches the mirror. So within brackets in front of incident ray, write a point. The ray which reaches the mirror. The light ray which reaches the mirror. So any light ray which reaches the mirror is called an incident ray. Okay, the ray which reaches the mirror. So in front of in A B, I have indicated incident ray. So within brackets, you have to write the ray which reaches the mirror. Okay, so when I have marked what BC is, uh, BC I have marked the reflected ray. Reflected ray, I have marked as reflected ray. Now see here what is reflected ray means? That is the ray which leaves the mirror. Okay, so within brackets you can write the light ray which leaves the mirror. So BC is the ray which leaves the mirror. So any light ray after striking on the mirror surface which leaves the mirror is called a reflected ray so any light ray after getting reflected the 
ray which leaves the mirror surface is called the reflected ray. So mark it as the reflected ray. BC is the reflected ray. The ray which leaves the mirror. So then I have marked point B. Can you see that? B. I have marked B is the point of incidence. Point of incidence. Okay. Now what is point of incidence? What do you mean by the point of incidence? Does place the spot on the mirror surface where the incident light ray strikes. Okay, the place where the incident light ray touches the mirror. The place where the incident light ray touches the mirror is called the incident ray. Okay, so sorry, uh, it's called the point of incidence. So what do you have to understand from the point of incidence? It is the point where the incident ray goes and touches the mirror. Okay, so within brackets, I point of incidence for point of incidence. The point on which, sorry, the point on the mirror surface, the point on the mirror surface on which the incident ray strikes, the point on the mirror surface on which the incident ray strikes, the point on the mirror surface on which the incident ray strikes the point on the mirror surface on which the incident ray strikes okay so now i can tell you what uh, bx is so bx is what bx is the normal that is a construction done by me okay so Bx is the normal. I've indicated that that is normal. Okay. Bx is normal. But the thing is, you need to draw how you need to learn how to draw the normal, how to make this construction called normal. Okay, see here. Now you know the criteria, right? Mn is the plane mirror, AB is the incident ray, the ray which reaches the uh, mirror surface. Point B is the point of incidence, the place where the incident ray touches the mirror. BC is the reflected ray, the ray which leaves the mirror. So Bx is the normal i'm telling you i'm going to teach you how the normal is constructed so it's here the normal has to be started drawing from the point of incidence see that the normal has to be started drawing from the point of incidence in hand it has to be drawn in a way that it becomes perpendicular with the mirror surface normal has to be started drawing from the point of incidence and it has to be drawn in a way that it is perpendicular with the mirror surface. See that the mirror surface is perpendicular to the normal what I constructed here. What I've constructed here. And this normal has to be in between the incident ray and the reflected ray. Okay. So once again, the normal has to be started constructing from the point of incidence. Okay. Okay. I've, I've done that. And it has to be ultimately perpendicular to the mirror surface. Yeah, that's also available here. And this normal has to be lying in between the incident ray and the reflected ray. Are you guys clear with that? How to do the normal? Normal is constructed starting from the point of incident in a way that it is perpendicular with the mirror surface in between the incident ray and the reflected ray. Put up your hand those who are okay with that. How to construct the normal? Okay, so that's how to draw the uh, normal, right? So that's also done, right? Okay, now I wanted to draw this. Okay, hold on, hold on. I want to uh, teach you some more things. Okay, so then you can draw it. Now, can you guys see that there's an angle? Okay, that there's an angle called A, B, X. Can you see that angle? A, B, X. So I have to mention that. You can see the whole board, right? A, B, X. A, B, X. Uh, so this is the angle. Uh, A, B, X. Angle here. Okay. So I want you to uh, go to this part of your text. See that I have not mentioned it, right? A, up the angles indicate kind of mean A, B, X. This part I have not indicated. Can you see that? I hope you can understand what I'm, what I'm meaning. Right, this uh, this thing thing like the arrowhead on B, right? A B X. Okay, that we call as the so mark it. Huh? I'm not I'm not marked it. You have to mark it. Mark it. A B X. 
so abx is called the incident angle okay or else angle of incidence then i have given you angle of incidence i have given you that right so what is this angle of incidence so we are talking about this angle isn't it this angle we are talking about we mark it as i name it as i because angle of incidence what is it the angle in between the incident ray and the normal can you see that i the angle of incidence is the angle in between the light ray called incident ray and the normal so you have to mention it angle of incidence is what the angle in between the incident ray and the normal write it the angle in between the incident ray and the normal so what do you call the angle of incidence the angle in between the incident ray and the normal the angle in between the incident ray and the normal you have to mark it the angle in between the incident ray and the normal okay so in in front of incident angle angle of incidence you have to mark right uh, within brackets uh, i i have indicated that already right sorry 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 i forgot that so here uh, cbx put up mark like this cbx okay so go for cbx what is cbx c b x okay cbx cbx we call it as the angle of reflection angle of reflection so we mark it as r we mark it as r mark it as r okay right we mark it as r okay so what angle of reflection are we indicated it angle between the reflected ray and the normal what's our uh, angle of reflection uh, the angle in between the reflected ray and the normal that's called the angle of reflection okay and when you clearly clearly see it when you clearly see it you would observe a b x that means incident angle okay is equal to c b x that's what that's the reflected angle so i equals r that means angle over here should be equal to angle over here so keep it in your mind if there was a light ray strikes on a plane mirror angularly that light ray would get reflected with an equal magnitude of the incident angle that means if it strikes on the plane mirror with an angle the light ray would get reflected with an equal angle okay so why did we have to construct this uh, normal that is to identify the incident angle that is to give there is to create the incident angle and the reflected angle okay so then we can understand okay this was the incident angle which in, through which the light ray strikes on the mirror and then we can equal that angle to the reflected angle because a reflecting a angle of reflection and the angle of incident ang angle of incidence is equal okay so that's why we construct the normal so keep it in your mind if an if there was an incident ray strike on the plane mirror with an angle the light ray would get reflected with the same angle with an equal magnitude of the angle as the reflection angle okay so i wanted to draw this now little leon no vertical leon got right that's done and draw this and then you have to write it also okay write this also and then i'll describe it once again okay draw it like this because you would be you need to be very familiar with all sort of uh, Uh, things what I just told you about this incident angle, reflected angle, point of incidence, incident angle, incident ray, reflected ray, everything. Right. Uh, make a clear cut. Can you put up your hands, please? All right. Right. Tangal dagan make. Make a. Other than that, while it's not real, the facts that you have modified. so you have to draw this and then this part also has to be included in front of the diagram right you can draw the diagram somewhere over here because you have space here here you have enough space you can draw the diagram here and you can mention what type uh, uh what you call squared here go for it
this part we have talked about the laws of reflection write the first law uh first law okay the incident ray the incident ray the incident ray comma reflected ray the incident ray comma reflected ray and the normal drone and the normal drone at the point of incidence incident ray comma reflected ray and the normal drone at the point of incidence lies on the same plane lies on the same plane so that's what the first law of reflection right so they say if uh, the incident ray comma the reflected ray and this normal the construction what we do uh, starting from the point of incidence they all lie on the same surface same plane i would explain it like this okay i just uh, demonstrate it like this so imagine that there's a surface okay imagine that there's a surface my again right so just imagine uh, there's a surface like okay on the mirror okay to the mirror there is a light ray coming okay this is the incident ray and there's a light ray going from the mirror that is a reflected ray okay so these two and the normal also we draw in the same uh, same plane see here right so the incident ray comes to the mirror surface like this the red pen the reflected ray goes away from the mirror surface the black pen and the normal we had to draw in between these two in this way in the same plane okay so that's what see, they simply say the incident ray the reflected ray and the normal they lie on the same plane the same so along the same surface see here can you see that so incident ray the reflected ray and the normal they lie on the same plane are you guys clear with that is that part clear to all of you atusan if you are clear with that okay all right okay okay right the next point the angle of incidence the angle of incidence the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection that's what we meant earlier i is equal to r within back us right quickly the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection within back us i equals r perfect right that's it next okay so we go for the next part uh reflection through plane mirrors reflection through plane mirrors so we are going to uh, observe how would be the ray diagram if you uh, keep any object in front of plane in front of the plane mirror how would the object would be reflected they are reflecting the lights of uh, the light emitted by the object okay so or is the light reflected by the object okay so just we have a we have simply a plane mirror again we call it as a mirror okay we have this uh, plane mirror call it as m n now if you keep a big object right and right a comparatively a bigger version of an object okay big object large object there would be many light rays coming from that object okay from any object there would be many millions of light rays coming from that object that means if there were if there if there was light falling on me from a light source from me there would be many light rays reflecting into many directions right so there would be many light rays coming from any object even due to reflection when light falls on me from my body there will be a lot of light rays uh, reaching uh, any direction right so in this case now if you have any object with a large surface area large size are uh, creating a lot of light rays uh, to for us to identify how would the light rays be reflected by a plane mirror would be challenging okay that would be challenging so because of that we are not going to keep a comparatively like a relatively a large object instead we are going to keep a very minute object we call it as a point object that means just a dot in front of the plane mirror what do we do we place a dot in front of the plane mirror just a dot 
This is the object. A dot in front of the plane mirror. That's what we do. Okay. So we don't keep a pin. We don't go in front of the plane mirror. We don't keep anything in front of the plane mirror. But instead, we place a dot in front of the plane mirror, and we would see how the light rays from this dot would reach the mirror, and how would they get reflected, and how would the image be formed? Okay. In this case, actually, to determine how would the light rays be reflected and the image formed, two light rays are more than enough. Actually, you need two light rays coming from the object. Was a mirror to identify how would the image be formed by the mirror after reflection. You need how many light rays? Two light rays coming from the object to the mirror surface, and you need to get the reflection of those two light rays, and that would be enough how the image to understand how the image is created. Okay, so this is how it happens. There is one light ray. So this is this is a object. We name is name it as O. Okay, we name it as O from the object O. As one light ray reaches the mirror like this, those has to be straight lines. I think I have already mentioned it, okay, like this. So this point, uh, okay, I name this point of incident as A. Now what do I have to do? I know the concept. I know the concept. Then I have to draw the normal to get the reflected ray. Right, I have to draw the normal. So this is incident ray. Now to this angle, to the, uh, the, you have to consider the angle, the incident angle to an equal angle. With an equal angle, the light ray would get reflected. Okay, this is the reflected angle. Okay, I'm not. So why did I made the why did I do the construction normal here to get an idea how would be the incident angle and relative to that I can uh, determine the reflect angle of reflection here. Okay, so what OC now? OC, oh sorry, OA is what now? The incident ray. OA is the incident ray. What is point A? The point of incidence. Right now, A I would mark it as uh, B. This is one reflected ray. A B. Now there's another light ray coming from this object. Okay, there's another light ray coming from this object. It strikes somehow here. So I would mark this point as C. Incident point as C. Now, what do I have to do? I have to do the construction again, but normal. To get what the incident angle. Okay, I got the incident angle, and with an equal angle of reflection, it would get reflected. Okay, it would get reflected like this. It has to be equal angle, right? Reflected. Okay. So now, what? Uh, what is O? O is object. What is O A and O C? The two incident ray. What's A and C? The two incident points. What's A, B, and this is C, D? What are those two lights? Those are reflected light rays. Okay. So then I have to. I I wanted to write those. I wanted to write those. Quickly write them over here. Right. M N is the plane mirror. You can write it. M N is the plane mirror. M N is the plane mirror. Mn is the plane mirror. Okay. Mn is the plane mirror. Next. Try the next. Mn is a plane mirror. And the next, OA, OA, and OC are two incident rays. OA and OC are two incident rays. OA and OC are two incident rays. OA and OC are two incident rays. Coming to the uh, coming from the object, coming from the point object, O A and O C R two incident ray coming from the point object. 
O E N O C R two incident ray coming from the point object. Next point. Point A and C are points of incidence. Points A and C are points of incidence. Points A and C are points of incidence. So then I want you to do the construction for normal, right? Do the construction for normal. It's not done here. You have to do it uh, normal for this one. Write the max incident angle, incident the reflected angle. Normal for this one, incident angle, reflected angle. You have to do it on your own. Okay, do the construction for normal for each incident point again. The you have to do the construction, right? Do the normal. And then uh, do it quickly. Mark the incident angle and reflected angles as well. And then write A, B, and C, D, R. These two rays are A, B, and C, D, R. See here, these two rays A, B, and C, D, R. Reflected rays. Reach in the eye. So see that uh, the light rays from the point object reaches the mirror then get reflected into what into your eye get ref gets reflected into your eye then you have to write up another point right now can you see that in this case can you see that right these two light rays which reaches the ear okay these two light rays which reaches the ear a b light ray and c d light rays they seems to be they seems to be getting like they are extensions the extensions of the light uh, reflected ray a b and c d seems to be like meeting in meeting at a point i inside of the plane mirror okay now as you all know that the light uh, light rays cannot be traveling curved ways no it has to be traveled in straight lines so now i here now just imagine imagine the eye here looking at the mirror now just imagine there was nothing there was a uh, there was a this thing now here imagine that there was a uh, surface here there was something uh, like a uh, disturbance something like a, a board or what something so the eye cannot directly see the point object because there's a board okay now eye is looking at the mirror so to the eye there are light rays reaching the uh, there are light rays reaching from the mirror there are light rays reaching the, from the mirror, but I, our eye doesn't know that there's an object above the uh, above uh, above the eye. Okay, uh, it sees the eye sees that there are light rays reaching from the mirror, and I get fed that those light rays are coming from a point I inside the mirror because light rays never travel uh, travel in a uh, curved ways they travel in straight lines so the our human eye thinks this light ray a b and c d are coming from a point o inside the plane mirror so our eye see that the image the object's image is created here actually the image object is created uh, object's image is created here now that's because now these two dotted lines are not real rays uh, those two dotted lines are not real rays the two dotted lines are the extensions of the reflected rays A, B, and C, D, which appears to be meeting at point I inside the plane mirror. That's where the image is formed. Okay. So write a point, write a point, the next point, the final point. The reflected ray A, the extensions, the extensions of, the extensions of, the extension of, Reflected rays A, B, and C, D, the extensions of reflected ray A, B, and C, D, those are A, B, and C, D are not real rays. The extensions of a light rays A, B, and C, D appears to be meeting, appears to be meeting, appears to be meeting at a point I at a point I 
at a point i inside the plane mirror at a point i inside the plane mirror at a point i inside the plane mirror so our human eye now though the real object is here our human eye see the reflection of this object inside the plane mirror our human eye sees the reflection of the eye reflection of the point object inside the plane mirror that's what we see you know just imagine just go in front of a plane mirror your whole body can be seen inside the mirror so is it the whole body is it your real body no not your real body but an image of your body a reflection of your real body is placed in front it plays inside the mirror plays inside the mirror right so keep it in your mind so this uh, extensions of reflected rays ab and cd meets at point i inside the plane mirror that's where the image is formed 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 okay now this further states now see here it further states not only these two rays but many rays from the point o that means not only these two objects which are coming from the point o reaches the mirror but there are many rays from the point object also comes to the mirror surface and gets reflected to the human eye but we don't want all of those light rays to get an idea how the image be formed only we need is two light rays reaching the mirror surface from the point object or whatever to get an idea about the image how it is formed right by a plane mirror so it says not only these two light rays but many rays from the point o come towards come towards the mirror and gets reflected and reaches the eye the observer sees the light rays are coming from the point i so the observer sees the image is formed at point i but but really the light rays are not coming from point i yeah the light rays are not coming from the point i the light rays are coming from the mirror because the light rays from the point objects reach the mirror and they got reflected to the eye so the observer see that these light rays appears to be meeting at point i so this observer see that the light rays could be coming from there that's why the observer sees the image is formed at point i did you understand put up your hand those who were clear with that part so this distance from the object to the so you should have marked all this the distance from this one this object to the mirror we call it as the object distance this is called object distance okay this is called object distance and this is called image distance okay image distance so that's what i have marked here okay all right so then uh, we have to talk about the characteristics of the image formed by a plane mirror okay so this is it that's it right so that's it now uh, in the sense now in this case the in the next case we will be talking here about the characteristics of the images formed by a plane mirror so we are going to talk about the features of the images formed by the plane mirror and all those features can not you are not you are not by heart in those features you can simply learn about them like have an idea about the features of the images formed by a plane mirror by looking at this ray diagram that's very important right by looking at this ray diagram if you do the ray diagram clearly you can uh, look at the ray diagram and you can clearly say what are the features uh, of the image formed by the plane mirror okay so let's see, see here first one so we have some description descriptions also but those are not uh, as necessary much but let's just uh, go through them quickly uh, no rays passes through the no rays passes through this uh, image now as i told you there are no actually like actual light rays passing through this uh, image okay because i mean from the image there are no light rays coming right those were uh, those were like extensions of the uh, two rays a b and c d right uh, no rays uh, no rays passes through this image since there are no light rays at that at the location of the image it just it, it just appears that the rays are coming from that point this image cannot be projected on a screen these type of images are called virtual images okay so now uh, simply uh, so uh, plane mirrors forms virtual images i would explain it in this way 
now if you go in front of a plane mirror right your your body would be seen inside the plane mirror your body would seen you be seen inside the plane mirror uh so that image inside the plane mirror cannot be projected on another screen you can't take that image which is inside the plane mirror your image in front inside the plane mirror into another screen into somewhere else you can't take it that stays forever inside the plane mirror like when you go in front of the plane mirror then your image will be created inside the plane mirror you can't take it out but there are some optical instruments when you go in front of them the image will be created on another surface right so we'll have curved curved mirror surfaces we'll they will create some images not inside the mirror but somewhere else okay so uh, so in this case this image which is created inside the plane mirror cannot be taken out onto another screen such images are called virtual images okay such images are called virtual images so first feature first feature you have to highlight that first feature the plane mirrors form virtual images next one all the images formed by the plane mirrors are virtual images okay you can highlight that also all the images formed by the plane mirrors are virtual images first feature of the uh, images formed by plane mirrors virtual images next one distance from the object to the plane mirror object distance is equal to the distance from the image to the plane mirror image distance so that is another characteristic of the image formed by plane mirror image distance of image distance and the object distance are equal next one uh, so that's also important right virtual images are formed by plane mirror and the third one is uh, okay i'll i'll go for this one so virtual images are formed by the plane mirror and the next one uh, image distance is equal to the object distance next one identical to the object so when you go in front of the plane mirror your your side of the body would be appear inside the plane mirror as the image you will not be you will not be magnified by the plane mirror you will not be diminished by the plane mirror. your image i'm telling right your image what you see inside the plane mirror will not be magnified sometimes there are mirrors that magnify your body size sometimes there are mirrors which uh, minimize your size but plane mirrors are not so they would exactly tell you the exact size of your body they would tell you exact size of any object kept in front of the plane mirror so they actually form ident images identical to the object which means same size images same size uh, image size is equal to the object size let's try like this uh, identical identical object image size image size is equal to object size okay so within bracket right uh, plane mirrors form identical images to the object which means image size is equal to the object size said so right that now that can be clearly seen now put that see here we kept a point object in front of the plane mirror we got the image as a point image we didn't like we didn't ob obtain a large image than the point size of object we didn't ob the obtain a, a small uh, image than the object we ob exactly obtain same size of the image so plane mirrors forms identical images which means images which are similar in size to the object next one laterally inverted i'll tell you what lateral inversion is you can uh, you have to write a epic uh, just 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 leave it lateral inverted i'll i'll tell you what lateral inversion is lateral inverted and upright image i'll tell you what upright image is also right same orientation you can write same orientation same orientation as the object same orientation as the object now when you go in front of the plane mirror where are in the harita hitagana the your image also will be harita hitagana right so when you go in front of the plane mirror where are harita kapul dekin hitagana inna kota your image will not be upside down right ehema wenne ne the same orientation that you uh, in which you stay would be the image image orientation so same orientation as the object uh, object image has the same orientation as the object which means uh, upright so if the image has an opposite orientation as the orientation of the object you would say uh, inverted i'll talk about that right okay so what are the characteristics of the image formed by a plane mirror virtual images that means image is formed inside the optical instrument which is a plane mirror you can't take it out next one uh, they form uh, images image distance and the object distance is equal next one Uh, identical to the object images are identical to the object that means same size images are formed as the size of the object lateral inverted i'll tell you what lateral inversion because i have to give you a definition for that okay next one 
uh, upright because uh, upright in the sense uh, the uh, image orientation is similar to the orientation of the object. Okay, those are the features formed by the features of the images formed by a plane mirror. Okay, so then I wanted to uh, now afterwards I wanted to draw a line. So these are the features of all the features of all the images formed by different optical instruments. We have to talk. We have to know about these. So then we can uh, give idea about all the features of the images formed by different optical instruments. Okay, right. Uh, so we have particularly uh, the uh, features or characteristics of the images formed by plane mirror, virtual images they are, and the object distance and the uh, image distance are equal. So plane mirrors form equal size uh, images as the object, and lateral inversion occurs in plane mirrors when the images are formed. And upright images, the image orientation would be similar to the orientation of the object in front of the plane mirror. Right. So that's it about the features of the plane mirror, characteristics of the images formed by the plane mirror, and thereafter we have to talk about general characteristics, characteristics of any image. Right. Virtual. Okay. Virtual. So write like this: uh, an image which cannot be taken onto another screen. An image which cannot be taken onto another screen. So plane mirrors form such images. An image which cannot be taken onto another screen. An image which cannot be taken onto another screen. Virtual means that if you can't uh, project the image formed inside the uh, optical instrument into another uh, another screen, you call it as a virtual. You call it as a virtual image. Virtual image in front of that, right? And image that may be different, uh, they are different. Neva may plane the rest of the images of the features. You have to draw a line like this, and then uh, because we are going to circle it, we are going to circle it, right? So, virtual image is what? Uh, an image which can't be taken onto another screen, not right? Real image is what? The opposite of it. Images which can be taken onto another screen, images which can be taken onto another screen. So, there are also images which can be projected on another screen, projected on another surface. So those are called real images. Ah, lateral inversion. Ah, we have to write the definition of that. Lateral inversion. Write like, write like this. Lateral inversion. So if you go in front of the plane mirror and raise your right hand, the image would be lifting its left hand. Okay. Uh, so simply it's like this. If you go in front of the plane mirror and if you have a circle like this, you would see the same circle on the plane mirror because that is a symmetrical object you would not you would not see any uh, lateral inversion but lateral inversion take place on it if you just mark a dot over here and if you see the image dot image dot would be somewhere over here opposite now the direction is opposite right so this this uh, transferring of the direction like a uh, right hand and the left hand left hand of the image is called lateral inversion right right like, right like this Right and left side of the image, right and left side of the image is interchanged, is interchanged right and left side of the object, sorry, like right and left side of the object, sorry, right and left side of the image is interchanged, is interchanged. With the right and the left side of the object, right and left side of the image is interchanged with the right and left side of the object. So that's what we call as lateral inversion. So if you have a mirror and if you carry a, a board written with P letter, P would be laterally inverted. If you carry a board written with a letter B, it would be laterally inverted. Definitely, it would be laterally inverted. Okay, it would be like this. But if you carry a let, uh, letter written on a board uh, like this, a symmetrical object, symmetrical uh, figure would be symmetrical. I mean, no lateral inversion. We, we see, we, we observe that the lateral inversion has not occurred, but really it occurs if you mark a point on this uh, letter O. You would see that get inverted when you're observing it uh, through the plane mirror, right? So this is what's lateral inversion. So these are features that we have to know when we are talking about this optical instrument, not the features of uh, images formed by the plane mirror, 
So images, uh, features of the images formed by the plane mirror, these are, we uh, discussed about them previously, right? So these are the features. So we are talking about the features which could be present in any of the uh, images formed by optical instruments. So first one is virtual images which can't be taken onto another screen. Second one is real, opposite of virtual images can't be taken on, taken onto can be taken onto another screen. Lateral version, right hand and left hand side of the object is inverted when obtaining the image. Okay, so I gave you examples also. So upright in the sense, right like this. Upright in the sense, the orientation of the image is similar as the orientation of the image. Sorry, the orientation of the image is similar as the orientation of the object. The orientation of the object is similar as the orientation of the image. Okay, so if you have a uh, mirror like this, if this is the object, image would also be like this. Same orientation. Orientation of the image would be similar as the orientation of the image. I know that I've not kept uh, enough space for that, but just uh, do it somewhere over here at least. Okay. I don't have any space over there. <laughs> just leave some smeary uh, or Don't uh, get this because I have to give you uh, two more points. Okay. Right. Upright image in the sense the orientation of the image is similar as the orientation of the object. So, what is object? What is image? Now, in this uh, plane mirror, I have marked the blunt side. So, you usually keep the object in front of the plane mirror. In the blunt side is the inside of the plane mirror. This is the image. Okay, this is the object. Okay. So, orientation uh, of the image is similar to the orientation of the object. Next one, inverted in the sense, orientation of the image is opposite to the orientation of the object. Orientation of the image is opposite to the orientation of the image. So, orientation of the image is opposite to the orientation of the object. So, in this case, object is in this orientation, but the image is inverted. All right, always integral. So, that's what you call an invert image. Orientation of the object is opposite to the orientation of the image. Sorry, on the orientation of the image is opposite to the orientation of the object. Okay. So I wanted to write another point over here. Magnified image. I'm not given that. Magnified image. What's magnified image? Size of the image is larger than the object. You can write the definition also. Size of the image is larger than the object. Size of the object. Sorry, size of the image is larger than the object. Size of the image is larger than the object. Next one, opposite of that is diminished image. Diminished image. Size of the image is smaller than the object. Diminished image. Size of the object. image is smaller than the object. Size of the image is smaller than the object. Size of the image is smaller than the object. 